Celebrating 60 years of covering the Inland Northwest, your official home of the 2012 Summer Games. This is KHQ Local News Today. Right now on KHQ, breaking news. And we will be following breaking news throughout the entire morning for you. A mass shooting in Colorado. Some brand new information just crossing our wires out of Aurora. They have now revised the death toll. They have lowered it down. 12 people killed, 50 injured. You are looking at live pictures right now of the hospital where many of those injured are being treated. If you're just waking up this morning and tuning in, here's what we want to tell you and update you. Here's what's happened. Well, this morning, early morning, the midnight showing of the new Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises, a gunman wearing uh, all black kicked through a door of an Aurora, Colorado movie theater wearing riot helmet, bulletproof vest, and carrying a shotgun. He released some sort of a canister. People inside the theater heard a hissing sound. The next thing they knew, this gunman opened fire. And again, the death toll right now, 12 people dead, at least 50 people injured. Among those injured, including a three-month-old child and a six-year-old child. We are going to be following this breaking news for you all morning long and again these are live pictures of the hospital where some of those 50 injured are being treated. The police ambulances and emergency crews swarmed that scene after frantic calls started flooding the 911 switchboard. Officers came running in telling people to leave the theater immediately. Uh, uh, Selena Jordan telling the Denver Post she said some police were actually carrying uh, people out of that movie theater. Officers later found the gunman near a car behind the theater. A gas mask, rifle, handgun, at least one additional weapon were found inside. Suspect was then taken into custody, but so far no name was released. Uh, authorities did just confirm information that was out there earlier this morning that the suspect is a male in his early 20s. We can also tell you that uh, also the FBI has evacuated the neighborhood where that suspect lives because they, they believe that there could be possible explosives inside the suspect's home. We want to let you know as far as those being treated right now at area hospitals in the Aurora uh, location, they say that some people are actually being treated for a chemical exposure to the canister that was released right before the shootings occurred. They said that also some people with gunshot wounds are listed in anywhere between uh, critical and severe as far as their injuries. And for an idea of uh, what that uh, chaos was like inside of that specific theater where the Dark Knight Rises was showing, we do have interview with uh, somebody who knows firsthand what happened inside. Said anybody by anything that I say, but I just don't feel like anybody should be kept in the dark about what happened. Um, the witness that was in Theater 9 was a, a, a young woman. She was talking to me. I, I had asked her what theater she was in, and she said 9, and I just asked her if she saw anything or if anything happened. Um, what she described, it, it, at first I didn't translate it quite well. It, it sounded like madness to me. Um, she said that a man uh, about 6 feet tall, taller than her, uh, kicked through the door, and he was in, a, a, like she said, a riot helmet. Um, she said he was it had a bulletproof vest on. Uh, you know, she said that he was completely covered in all black with goggles. And he, she said that um, after that point, when she saw that he was holding a shotgun, they, her and her boyfriend dropped to the floor and just kind of started to crawl to see if they could get away. Um, they got up and they started to run through the emergency exit. Um, she said that when she turned around. All she saw was the guy slowly making his way up the stairs and just firing. And we can't tell you the President Obama has issued this statement saying that he is saddened by the horrific and tragic shooting, pledging that his administration is committed to bringing whomever is responsible to justice, ensuring the safety of our people and caring for those who have been wounded. Moviegoers speaking of the terror as the violence erupted, saying that police came in as the gunshots were heard, yelling at people to get down. Uh, Benjamin Fernandez, 30 years old, telling the Denver Post that he heard a series of explosions. He said that people ran from theater and there were gunshots shots as police shouted, get down. I can tell you, we want to take a live now to KUSA. Well, I just hope that nobody ever has to see that or go through that. And I just hope that I know that there's a lot of people who didn't make it. And I hope the people who are still hanging on make it. That's ben, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to share your story. I know it's not always easy to do, and good luck to you and 
and Thank all of yours. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I mean, just a lot of people, you're, you're struck by talking to the folks who witnessed this tragedy here in Aurora. Um, they're going to be carrying these images with them for the rest of their lives. It's absolutely tragic, some of the things they had to witness. Remember to, to reach out and to surround those people with, with love over the coming mm -hmm. weeks, because there's a lot of folks that were indirectly affected by this and those ripples will start to spread now through the whole community. Yeah, if you are just turning on your TV, just your alarm went off at six o'clock, you see us here and are hearing kind of what's going on. Um, around 12 o'clock, there were three showings that started up of the new Batman movie, The Dark Knight, at the Century 16, which you're seeing a live picture from Sky 9 of, it's at the Aurora Town Center. There were three theaters showing it in Theater 9. Shortly after the movie started, there was a gun battle on the big screen. And a man, all dressed in black with a riot helmet and a gas mask, walked in the emergency exit, you know, that's in the front of the theater, threw some canisters that contained gas, smoke filled the theater, and then he started shooting randomly, didn't say a word, and just shot people. Children were there, teenagers, adults were there, for the showing of this PG-13 movie. Everyone was excited for this big blockbuster and they wanted to be the first ones to see it. Some were waiting in line at six o'clock last night to get a good seat in one of those three theaters. And the, the shooting was so aggressive, Kyle, that some of the bullets went through the wall and some people in theater eight were actually injured as well. 12 people have now died. your weather in the sixes. All right, we want to let you know we're going to continue to follow this all morning long. Obviously, it is just beyond anything anybody can imagine. You know, and I was just telling Sean, our two daughters were at the midnight showing right here in Spokane, George, and it's just, it's one of those things that you just, you, it's hard right now to even wrap our arms around this as to what has happened. The, among those injured, the youngest, a three-month-old child and a six-year-old child. All right, the weather is the story here. A lot of uh, lightning strikes earlier this morning. George, how are we looking right now? Oh, it's still going, Sean. Really, it's just starting to get wound up. The heaviest stuff, the worst part of this storm system is going to be later on this afternoon into the evening, and that's when we can have flooding out there from heavy rain caused by these thunderstorms. Look at those clouds outside. This is just one direction. You could do a 360 with that camera and it would look like that everywhere. We've seen nothing but one lightning strike after another lighting up the sky. Same thing over in Coeur d'Alene. Heavy clouds wherever you go. Here's your satellite radar and you can see that flow coming up from the southwest. They got it going on on the west side too. But if you get east of the Cascades and go all the way into northwest Montana, that's the area I'm talking about. That's the area where as we go through this day, you're going to see one lightning strike after another. We're worried about starting fires because obviously we've been warm and everything's been pretty dry out there of late. You can see where the heart of this system is. It's also down to the south. If you go down around Colfax in that area, all the way up to Colville, and again, it's gonna go all day long. Tomorrow is going to be really nice. All right, thanks very much. Breaking news. We are following more breaking news for you. A wildfire. Good news is it looks to be uh, diminishing out west of town on the I-90 corridor. Unfortunately, it was sparked by lightning. Right now, we want to go ahead and go to Blake Jensen, who is live with details. Blake. Shelly, Sean, good morning. Uh, we are about 40 minutes west of Spokane, right off the fish trap exit, about two miles south of I-90, and that's where this fire started about 9.30 last night. We're told by fire officials here on the scene that it has already burned about 500 acres, but Sean, as you mentioned, it is starting to diminish. We do They have already sent many of the crews home. We just have a few out there in the prairie right now looking for any startups uh, out there, but uh, this morning, joined by uh, the chief of Lincoln County Fire, uh, Scott Clemenson, and Scott, talk to us a little bit about kind of what happened how this all started we know we think at least it was the lightning that moved through overnight yeah at about 9 30 last night we were dispatched to a to a fire out here and uh, it was a pretty large fire it was about 100 acres when we arrived uh, it was growing relatively fast uh, we got a pretty good handle on it at first but as these cells the thunderstorms came through uh, they just really moved that fire around and the difficult terrain we were dealing dealing with uh, really made a difference made it tough and and talk to that point a little bit kind of the difficulties that you faced out here you got you had the thunder cells you described uh, some of the stuff that made it hard for the trucks to get through as well yeah we had uh, well this this area is really uh, a difficult terrain with there's a lot of cliffs there's a lot of creeks uh, small ponds and in, in places and when it's nighttime and you're in an area that hasn't been scouted up it, it really makes it more difficult the access to this fire was hindered by a couple of creeks that uh, we just couldn't get trucks across uh, once we did finally access the fire uh, the, the changing winds and the uh, the coolies that it could run through uh, allowed it to really get away from us. So if you had to make 
uh, a statement now, would you say 99% out? Well, at this point, uh, you know, it's really kind of tough to tell. I'd, I'd say we, we've got it probably 90% yep. uh, contained, okay. but we've got a lot of spots, hot spots along the outer perimeter, and we've got other engines coming in here at about 6, 7 o'clock this morning uh, to, to really knock it down and, and get it done. Great. Well, Scott, thank you uh, so much, and I wish you the best of luck throughout the rest of the day. Hopefully, uh, weather doesn't cause any more problems for you guys out here. But again, uh, 20 engines in total responded to this fire. Uh, we're told about 60 to 70 fire personnel were here at the height of uh, uh, of this fire and all of that again started uh, by just a single lightning strike and this could be a problem that we see really throughout the day today. Reporting live out near Sprague, Blake Jensen, KHQ Local News Today. Right now on KHQ Breaking News. And a similar story in Stevens County confirming about 20 minutes ago off of Highway 291 a lightning strike touching down there sparking a fire that was called in a 911 by a homeowner. Matt Rogers is heading that direction. When we hear from him we'll let you know. And we also have some lightning video we want to show you. We went ahead and rolled one of our sky cameras throughout the course of the morning, and it was very prevalent throughout the west southwestern part of the sky. As you can see here, that whole band of uh, thunder shower activity is actually along a corridor on I-90 between Ritzville and Spokane, moving eastward toward us. So for those of you that don't have the thunder and lightning as of yet, don't have any rain showers, just know that it is on its way from the west in the Ritzville area headed toward us here in Spokane. Once again, we do want to go ahead and recap. We are following numerous breaking news stories obviously this morning the biggest being out of Aurora Colorado if you're just waking up this morning here's what happened shortly after midnight the midnight showing of the new Batman movie The Dark Knight Rises a gunman opening fire inside a movie theater in Aurora Colorado carrying a shotgun wearing all black kicked in the door wearing riot helmet and bulletproof vest and yeah, we can tell you uh, that number from Aurora Colorado police uh, recently revised the good news the death toll lowered uh, originally uh, reported a uh, 15 dead now now they have revised that number 12 people killed 50 injured the youngest a three month old child that is being treated right now in the hospital. We understand those that are being treated. Uh, they say many of them actually from chemical exposure related apparently to the canister that was thrown right before the shootings occurred by the gunman. We also understand that uh, the 11 people being treated right now for gunshots ranging from minor to critical condition Two others walking in to be treated for tear gas contamination as well. All right, and obviously a lot of the different images there. We can tell you that five different hospitals are treating victims from the shooting in Aurora, Colorado. A chaos inside of a small theater as the Dark Knight Rises was playing when the gunman burst in there, uh, released some type of uh, tear gas or some type of hissing uh, uh, contraption there and then opened fire. And everybody told to get out, get down by the police. You're looking at internet video from that theater as this entire story was unfolding. One girl struck in the cheek, others in the stomach, including a girl who looked to be about nine years old. And again, we're going to follow this throughout the course of the morning. An absolutely horrific situation out of Aurora, Colorado.